Hi, this is Ushiod. Welcome back to Sable. Maybe this is the last part of the series? In which case, I'm glad you came this far with me, and I hope you enjoy the end of the journey. But there are still quite a little number of things. They're all little odd jobs. I just want to round up this game and do as much as I can. A couple more mysteries to solve, and maybe a couple more masks together. I want to get a beetle mask. Are you the person I need to speak to? Greetings, Glider. What can I do for you? Um, you got any tasks that you need doing? Before I could even finish the question, Aoife shouts, Larval husks. I repeat the words back to her as a clarification, and she nods. I need some larval husks. They're... How much do you know about beetles? A... Uh, a little bit? Well, not sure if this is part of that little bit, but larval husks are what get left behind when the beetle larvae grow. Beautiful, really tough casings. If you don't mind, I'd be grateful if you could collect some for me. The type I'm looking for are for Hercules beetles. You don't need to go far, but the nest is guarded by the mother beetle. You're going to have to find a way to get past her. I'll tell Ifa I actually have some larval husks here with me. I hand them over in exchange for a badge. Actually, there's one more thing you could do for me. Can you take these husks to Rekria and deliver them to Ian in the Chime Maker's Workshop? Anything else? Oh. Well, that was easy. I wasn't actually sure who, who I needed to talk to. Can I talk to you? Can I view my wares? What have you got? Can I sell stuff? I haven't sold anything. And I look, I've got so many mushrooms. This is the first time I've actually sold anything in this whole game. I had lots of those. So I can spare them. I can definitely spare them. Uh, I'll sell a couple of those as well. Wow, I've actually got money. I've actually got money. What else can I buy? The stuff I just sold him. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. Cool. So, I guess I've got to go and deliver something to Akria, which is over here. Nice. Good job. I got my beetle mask. And there are a couple things I, I, I want to see to in Akria as well. I think, wasn't there the, was it Law her name? She Did she return to here or something? I've got to deliver this package. And also something that I completely forgot that I needed to do. Didn't someone a long time ago challenge me to hide and seek? And I just I just ignored them. And I think I need to do that. If I want to get a final mask. Because if I can, I want to get all of the final masks. I've got... I think I could get the beetle mask now. I want the entertainer's mask and I want the climbing badge. Wait. Didn't we bust this person out of prison? What is going on? Did, didn't you get bust out of prison? Why are you back in there? What did you do now? Never mind. I guess. <laughs> we'll just leave them to it. So, I wanna... Okay, I've got to deliver this thing. So, let's head into town. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the hide and seek is in this town as well. So, a couple things I can do. Always good. I'm not the hugest fan of this town. The people here, I find, are a little bit too much effort. They they are a lot of work. Nice camel. Always appreciate a nice camel. Okay, just got to look around town. Find this place. May maybe this gameplay will be a bit choppy, as I just kind of tie up loose ends in, in here. What's, what's this shop? Hello. Ian says hello. Oh, you have the husks that Aoife promised me. Here's a little something for your trouble. Farewell. There we go. Quest completed. And here's the dude next door. Oh, he's, a, he's got a furnace. He looks too busy to interrupt. Watching him work is mesmerizing. Sounds of different parts of the world forming different colors, textures, and strengths of glass. Nice. I've never blown glass. I think it would be really fun to do. But I've never had the opportunity, or, or given myself the opportunity. But I think I'll be okay. I'm I'm okay at arts and crafts. I, I draw drawings and stuff. Maybe I make costumes and maybe I do have the, you know, the, the hands and the mentality for it. Who knows? But I'm sure in this town that there are kids playing hide and seek and I do need to find them. Hey, who's this? Hello? Look at the swirling pools of water. The glistening surface of liquid dancing and reflecting light. Inspiring. I can't tell if he's talking to me or himself. I'll leave him be. 
Sozo always said that artists are an odd sort. I mean, yeah, it's true. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hamza says hello, what can I do for you? Um, change my bike. I just bought some parts. Let's have a new a new bike. Get some new colours and Yeah. That will do. Laters. I found a shop. I didn't know it was here. Wait. What's going on with the shop? Hello. Welcome to Cully's Clothing. How can I help you? What have you got? Here's my selection. More clothes. I'm buying all of this stuff. Nice. Okay, it's been a while. Let's have a quick change. See you next time. I'm having a bad time trying to do these quests. But okay, what have we got? That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I think I'll be like this for a bit. I'm just going to be a, a merchant for a while. So that's my shopping done. New new thing. Now I'm all in disguise. Maybe no one will see me coming. Hello? Oh, power's back on. Did you do that? I might have had an involvement with it. Maybe. I don't think I could do this mission. Because, yeah, I have looked it up. And I'm pretty sure that this is the location of one of the people I need to find. Yeah, they're, they're normally here. This is the spot where they are. And they're not there. So either... Did I... I thought I started the mission a while ago. Or maybe I've looked it up. And it gave me the impression that I had started it. Wait, so what am I doing? What am I doing wrong? Here we go. Greetings, Glider. We don't know what you said to her, Glider, but we're grateful that you said it. Laura's returned with a renewed passion, and we credit you. So thank you, Glider, and be safe. A farewell. Okay, but how about give, give me a present? No, I don't want to say I'm grateful, <laughs> but I, I quite like that. Okay, so I've got the beetle mask. So now I just need to work out the glider mask. No, not the glider, climber mask. How do I get the third and hopefully final climber mask? That's my new mission. Okay. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm avoiding the issue at hand. I need to check out this thing over here. So this is the Sodonic Waste, isn't it? Where's the cartographer? Cartographer's balloon. That's what I want. So there's a, a big area toward the back. And I've kind of ignored it. it I think it's kind of like the last large thing on the map that I've yet to explore. And I've been putting it off because I've been enjoying this game a lot, I can't lie. And in some respects, I sort of don't want it to end. This guy doesn't like me. But where where to? It is. It's pretty easy to spot. There it is. Big thing in the distance. So let's go have a look. I'm falling. It's fine. I've got my new bike and everything. Cool. Actually, maybe I should change. I don't know. I wanna, I wanna experience all the things. Should I just wear this? What, what other costumes have I got? I just bought some new stuff. Sand surfer, wash top, monumental stone top. Let's go with the classic. There we go. There's my look. There's my vibe. So where, where was it? Oh wow, this thing, this thing is very speedy. So, hang on. Is it? Where do I want to go? Is it north? I think it's... Which way is north? Uh, I think this is east. I think this is my way. Kind of lost my direction slightly. It is kind of what maps are for. Maybe I should. I'm facing the right way. It's fine. So I kind of got used to this area being a bit spooky and empty wasteland kind of thing. Even more so. The other areas of wastelands, because of like natural reasons, like, you know volcanoes, natural disasters. This is a wasteland because it's it's man-made. So it's, it's a different kind of feel to it. So like the lava area, I would say, is probably the most empty and the most desolate area to explore. There's not a lot going on over there. But th this is... I mean, look, there's nothing. Okay, so we haven't checked this out. This is the area I've been avoiding. But it looks like we got some climbing to do. Okay. So this is 
kind of interesting. So yeah, I've given up on getting the Entertainer's Badge. I don't know what happened. I don't know if the game glitched or if I just missed the requirements or something. But I'm pretty sure I set off that mission. But for whatever reason, it's, it doesn't seem to be going. Maybe I missed my opportunity and that was it. Okay. There was things to collect there and I kind of missed my chance. Here's a chum. Yeah. I want to make it to 80. I think that's my my mission for the minute. I'm not going to make 80 for sure. Oh. Hello. Before I greet them, the hunter is making some breathy noises, loud exhales through near pursed lips and small effortful oofs. They run their hand along the back of their skull and stare upward and away for short moments before turning back in my direction with a shake of their head. It isn't how I'm used to seeing hunters, who I've come to associate with perfect calm. Glider. I can tell they're trying to infuse some calm into their voice, but it doesn't work. Can you help me? My name's Zebby. I've been out here for a while now, and my partner Dilhan, travelling partner I should say, got it in his head to climb up there after some bird's eggs. Mm hmm. That's There's eggs up there. Yeah, of course, but you know what else is up there? Dilhan. Zebby huffs. I'm not happy to admit this, but I'm not too fond of heights. Some would say I'm a little afraid of them, or a lot. If you could get up there and grab Dilhan for me, and tell him I'm going to kill him when he gets down here, that would be really helpful. I'll tell Zebby that I'm happy to do most of that and take on the task. Then I'll say goodbye. Okay, I guess we got some climbing to do. So I think we're back on track. No more unexpected side quests. Um, where do I start? It's not an obvious leading in point. Maybe here. I've, I'm glad I've been collecting chums all this way because my climbing is now pretty good. So even if I don't pick an optimum route, I should be able to slightly brute force certain things because I've got that extra stamina. Okay, that took like, yeah, that took a lot. That took a lot. No, I don't think that's the way that you're supposed to do it. There's a chum over there, though. Okay. Climbing. I'm ignoring the chum. I've given up. I'm satisfied with the my stamina levels that I've got. Oh, this is this is not a friendly area to climb. It really isn't. I'm, I'm not surprised that guy fell down and cracked open his head. <laughs> Okay. It looked like there was an entry point down there. There's like a doorway, but I'm up here now. Oh, is that an overhang? Okay, fine. I'll accept it. So what's down here? This is this is a maze. This is. Oh, I'm back to where I'm started. Ah. Okay. Let's let's go somewhere. Let's go somewhere else. Wait, is that... Those things recede when you get close. Maybe I could sneak up, but I'm not... I'm not feeling it. Wait, how do you get up here? Well, at least I've got something to do now. Let's, let's go this way. Let's go... Oh, no. Climb. Sable. That's it, I'm up. So this is where I come in. Maybe... Yeah, these overhangs ain't no fun. We'll go through here then. Maybe I should grab that chum. As it's so neatly on top of this little building area. And maybe from there I'll see something else. A lot of this is just getting good vantage points and just working out a good route. So that'll do. Hey chum. Gotcha. Good. That's 68. So... That looks good. That looks promising. Wait, wasn't I there before? Wasn't that exactly the same thing I did just now? It still looks good to me. I, I maintain my decisions. I've never done a wall transfer. Maybe I need to climb up to a certain point and then jump off somewhere else. This looks, this looks doable. This looks... Yeah, yeah, I think we can do this. Cool. Get to climbing. Wait, is it an overhang? 
No, we got it. We got this. That is some good upper arm strength. That is a killer. That is some good strength. And I think we got this. That was good. That was good. Wait, sh should we follow this path around? Seems like a... I wouldn't say if it's a good or a bad idea. It's an idea. Okay. This this looks good. This looks promising, actually. This looks fine. Wait. Should I be standing on this? What's above us? I can climb out of that. Hopefully. Nice little boost. That's good. I got this. Yeah, I really think you needed to have collected your chums if you want to climb up this, because this is brutal. This is brutal. Yep. I did my homework. I did my job. And I, honestly, I think I'm at the barest minimum to have, uh, be able to give this a, good, a look. Okay, I'm pretty high now. Okay, there's something over there. Maybe I should head for that. I got... There's... Oh my god. Is that where I need to get to? That is very high up. Well, one step at a time. Or one climb at a time. Okay, this is good. Gliding doesn't take any stamina. That's the best thing about it. I don't have to worry about my gliding. You just gotta attach yourself to a high enough point for it to take. Okay, I can't climb up the bridge, so I've got to take the side route. This has to be something. So, originally there was one of those mask givers there, wasn't there? And it's fallen to ruin. I I'm taking this tunnel because it's the only thing to take. There's, there's the nest. Can I take some eggs? No. Okay. This, this does not, hang on, can, can I, hmm, should I, wait, no, wait, look around, look around, up there, above looks okay, but I don't, I don't think I can reach that, do they raise me, I kind of hope that a geezer would help me go up, but it doesn't seem to work. Oh, it do, it do, it do. Okay, I need to wait for the next one. I'll see how high it will push me. If it just gets me out of the hole, that's one thing. If it gets me even higher, that's even better. I want to be facing this way. How reliable are these things? If it's every five years, we got we got trouble. Long gameplay. If it's every fifty seconds, uh, not not too bad. I'm waiting. I'm being patient. I'm being patient. Maybe it'll go. Here we go. It's bubbling. It's bubbling. Raise me up. Oh, it only raises me that high. Oh, fine. Let's let's try a different way. This this does not feel safe. Oh no. And that's where I come from. So going for it going for it. Way too impulsive. This could backfire so badly. Get to climbing. This is why I collected all the chums. My arms are strong. My arms are very strong. I can make it. It's all good. It's now 10 o'clock at night. Okay, that was good. So from here, is there a campsite up there? I'm, I'm like really far away from everything. Hmm. Oh, maybe that one. Oh, do I go for the low point? It's a chum. No, I don't want that. I'm going to go for this one. Where's the edge? Okay. Big jump. Oh, this is a big ask. Wait, what was... Oh, shit. Hang on. It's too late. It's too late. I've decided. If I need to bail, I'm going back over there. I think I can make this. This is a bad climb. This is hard as hell. And you really have to like... You have to take the risk. You really have to take the risk. Okay, I can get up there as well. There's our guy. That's our person. That's cool. 
Wow, a full moon and then some. Nice. I need to remember to return to the, the mysterious... What was it called? The mysterious shrine? I gotta give her a couple of days and then hopefully I can get something out of it. Here, a chum though. Thank you. It's weird, I climbed up some of the tall things. See in the background all those tall things? No chums over there. This side, there are chums. And that is our guy. I'm pretty sure that that is our guy. Howdy, 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 howdy. Coming in hot. Lots of birds here. Hello. Hey Glider, what of you? Dylan looks perfectly content, even happy, taking in the scenery alone. I gaze briefly out of the horizon. It is a nice view. Okay. It's quite a nice spot, yeah. He nods appreciatively. More than nice, stunning. I tell Dilhan that I've been sent by Sebi to encourage him to come back down and continue their journey together from less frightening heights. Dylan shakes his head. Zebi is a killjoy. Eh, have a look at this and tell me if you want to come down. Look at that beautiful beast. It's called a pink neck. Never heard of him. Native to the sodic wastes. People say they're direct descendants of the creatures that came in on the whale. That one's got a whole clutch of eggs right for the taking. Luha nods his resolve. I just need to figure out how to get them. Okay, can I help? Can I do anything to help with it? I've been thinking the best way is probably to frighten the mother off with something shiny and then get the eggs once she's gone. You're collecting masks, right? If you've got anything shiny and metallic, it might do the trick. I'll tell him I have a think on this and try to be of assistance. He thanks me and returns to his bird watching, and I say goodbye. Okay, so I do have a mask that is shiny, I'm pretty sure. Let's get changed real quick. Not not that. Probably the guard's mask? Shall I wear my goth gear? Doesn't really match, does it? My Maculus mask is a better, better match. We'll try this. So, wait, I don't tell him, I've got, wait, missions, tell me what to do. I need to scare the pink neck away from its nest and steal some of its eggs. Dilhan says the bird is afraid of shiny masks. I'm wearing a shiny mask, wait, it's up there? Okay, so there's, hang on. There's a geezer here. So maybe that will fire me up and get me close enough that I can do a thing. So if I stand here, i got to get up there? That's, that's super, super, super high. Okay. There's a, there's a rumbling, bumbling beneath my feet. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of worried. Okay, so it's, it's, it is this way, isn't it? i got my shiny hat on. It's not... Would it be even shiny at night? Okay, take me. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's... Super high, super high. Hey bird, I'm, I've come to scare you. Hey, I made it to Giza Tower. How you doing? We haven't met many creatures in the wild. Hey, how's it going? Oh, sorry guy. Don't, don't go, don't go too far. Oh God, I really upset it. And it's just circling out. I'll, I'll, I'll take all the eggs. I'll take all the eggs. Okay. Nice. Let's take the shortcut back. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Hey, man. I try not to look too tired as I hand the eggs over to Dilham, who seems positively delighted. Would you look at that? I hate to admit it, but you might be a better climber than me. At least a better bird scarer. Uh, birds tremble before me. Hmm. I suppose I should get back to Zebby now. But before I do, you deserve this. That's like no climb I've ever seen. Certainly not by an amateur. Dilha hands me a climbing badge and I thank him for it. See you around, Glider. Thanks. And I say goodbye. That was cool. That was cool. And I think with that I can do some stuff. Let's head back to the Burnt Oak Station. This is kind of like home for us. This is kind of where we started our adventure. And we got some friends in town. And from there... I can kind of get more masks. I've got two more that I can get. I'll get the beetle mask and I can now get the climber mask and I'm a bit of a fan of both of them by design. So let's have a look. 
up here. Up here. So howdy, howdy, howdy. Hold on, I'll grab the beetle mask. That's the one I got at the start of the video. We'll grab that one first. I think we're coming close to a point where I need to make a decision. We've given up on the entertainer mask and honestly it's probably not one that I will pursue. However, I do have more options. I need to decide, do I want to have something based on the design, because I like the mask, or do I want to pick something because I like what it's associated with, the kind of job that you can handle when you wear that kind of mask. So that's what I want to think about. So there's my new mask. I've got beetle powers now, which is a very cool thing. But we got one more, one more uh, ceremony to go through. I'm going to equip my beetle mask. We're not going to get many opportunities to see it. So I'm going to equip it now. Okay, get the camera sorted. Let's equip this thing. It's also night time, so I don't think you can really see. Oh, look at that. That is the coolest thing. And it, it has like a, a wing flicker as well. Every now and then. Go on, do, do, do the wing flicker. It's, it's like my favourite thing. I really like the masks that have a bit of animation to them. Okay. So, let's let's do another one. I'm going to do this one in silence. You can just absorb the ceremony for yourself and make your own observations on it. So, let's claim the climbing mask. That is it. Hmm. Now, I need to think about what there is left to do. There's not much left to do now. I've got my beetle mask. And honestly, I think it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> it's really, really cool. Hey, dude, stop sleeping. Okay, more more scrap. There we go. Not, not too much. Not too much, but it's all good. So if I fast travel somewhere, maybe that will move time on a bit. And where's... The, it's here, the Mysterious Shrine. Yeah, we are running low on things to do now. So I've done as best a job as I can. I might have missed one or two things, but I think I've made a good go of this game. And I've seen a lot of stuff. Mysterious Shrine, what is the time? It is three in the morning. I'm sure. I'm sure they're still awake. I wanted to get a look at this mask in daytime. <laughs> But three in the morning, it's not going to be no sunlight. So, where's... Where's the person who hangs out here? <laughs> They're still not ready. They mustn't... They must still not be ready. Okay, so, missions. What have I got? I've got to bring chums to the chum queen. Give back this for a few days to decipher the inscriptions. And end my gliding. It's too soon to end my guiding. We're very close and I think we're going to do it in this episode. This is the final part. But I do want to wait for, for Fur to come back. They're hiding over here. In their little house over here. Maybe they need a little bit more time. How, how's it looking? How's it looking? Still working on it. Come back soon. Wow, I'm breaking this game. Look at all the mountains underneath. Underneath? I'm not... Oh god, I've fallen through the map. I've fallen through the map. No. No. I was about to say, I'm not really the kind of person who goes out of their way to break games, but it's sort of happened. Bring the camera back. There we go. We are back now. 
We are back. <laughs> and she's disappeared. So, whatever. Let's let's go somewhere else. Maybe the further I fast travel, the more time passes. She wants time. I just gotta bounce around. And I need to have a bit of a, a meditation, a bit of a consideration about what I want to do to end my gliding. What do I want to pick? And I've got a few thoughts. There are a couple I don't want to do. Obviously, I'm not doing the entertainer because I wasn't able to get that mask. And it is now four in the morning. So, other options. Ooh. Okay, the beetle mask is very cool. I should probably go through the masks and we'll just discuss them one by one. But the beetle mask is very, very cool. But when I associate the people who wear the masks, they're generally innkeepers. And they're, they're actually quite chill. They're helpful. And they, they give you little tasks, things to do. And they help you be kind of like part of the, the community. So they're quite nice. I got So that's the plus for me. That's quite a good thing, I think. So beetle mask is the current favourite. So... Next up, what is the next choice? So, it's, it's not going to be the whale ship mask. Let's talk about the cartographer. And can I put on my climber mask? Wow. Yeah, my comedian head. <laughs> or is it like a gecko? Maybe I should wear a matching suit for it. I, I, I do like it. This is very cool. So, what what do I wear? What do you wear when you've got like a gecko head? Let's be an alien dude. Alien gecko. That is fine. So let's talk about, what was it I've forgotten already? It was the cartographer's one. Honestly, it's one of the best masks in the game. Extremely cool. But they live a bit of an isolated life. They just live on the top of the mountains. Some are friendly, some are grumpy. And they're kind of like, not even creative. They, they just kind of draw what they see. What is that big red thing over there? Is that the whale? It's a bit spooky. Oh no, isn't that? That's where the thunder is. No, that is the whale. That is the whale. Big old ship. So I would say cartographer, yes for the mask. But I, I don't think the job suits me. I don't think that's so good. Next up is the, the Machinists. We've seen those masks for a while. And they're kind of like Tinkerers. It's kind of a cool design again. But in terms of... I don't know. Some, some of them are really nice. And they got a big respect for the history of technology. Which is kind of cool. So they're always on the lookout for bits and pieces. But I don't think it's one for me. Then this Is it the guards? Oh, there's that sunrise. Look at that. Such a pretty game. Beautiful stuff. Is that the name of the, the masks? Is it the guards? It is the guards. Oh, the child's mask. Don't want that. We're growing up. The whole point of the game is about growing up. So, we have got the guards mask, the scrappers, and the merchants. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so the guards mask, honestly, it's a really cool mask. It's like a suit of armour kind of thing. Which is extremely cool. It's got a feather on the top, which is great. And... The people that wear them, I've had mixed experiences. A lot of the ones I've met, they're really nice. They just want to do what's right. They want to help the community. They want to do what's best for the people that are living in the place. However, when I went to Korea, a bit more of a, a mixed bag. Some of them are open to bribery. Some of them, yeah, kind of corrupt, that kind of thing. Putting children in prison. They got The ones guy in the prison aren't actually that bad. What is going on with this frame rate? I think it looks worse on my screen than on the recording, but it is, it's a bit choppy when I try and do stuff. But yeah, stunts. So the guards, honestly, early on, it was my hot favourite and what I wanted to do. Because they're kind of like, they just want to help. Which seems like quite a nice way to go about life. Okay, then you got the scrappers who just, they just collect metal. But the guy who looked after us, he's a bit of a grumpy dude. But honestly, he he was a bit of a he was a bit of a rock for us. He was always there. We can always return to him, and he gives us money. So it's it's kind of like a he's kind of like a nice person who was kind of good to us. And we got that mask. It would be a bit of a weird choice to pick, I think. So I actually I like it a bit more 
than what I initially thought I would. Then you got the merchants. It's a similar design. And the merchants, they're just they're just merchants. I've worked in retail. It's it's okay. But I don't think it's a life for me in the long term. And we're deciding. This is a big decision. And then you got the beetles we've discussed already. And then the climbers. And well let's get a look at this. Who wouldn't want to wear this? <laughs> Why would you not want to wear that? And I don't know, could you argue that they're a bit selfish? Because all the climbers we met, they always seem to be inconveniencing other people because they just want to go on an adventure. But sometimes it drags the people down around them. So one person, he ended up being injured, didn't he? He was at the bottom of a well. And we had to kind of like rescue him and get him out. And the guy just now, he'd kind of gone off on his own, abandoned his friend, who'd kind of like hit his head. So, a bit selfish, but there is a bit of an appeal. And this whole game has kind of been like that. You've kind of been like, there's something over there. I want to go and explore and climb it. And I've been playing this game for several hours. And if you've joined me on this adventure, that's very cool of you. I hope you enjoyed seeing these sights with me. But the whole game has been about being a climber. It has been about exploring the world. So I've got a strong temptation to be a climber because you've just been doing it for the whole game. <laughs> you know what I mean? So maybe it's a bit of an unusual conclusion, but I think that's my, my odd conclusion that I've come to. Wait, what is this? Is this somewhere we've been to before? Where, where even are we? Where even are we? We've I don't... Where are we? Oh, yes, we have been here before. So, let's let's check back in, in the mysterious shrine. Does she need more time? In which case, I probably should have visited them lots earlier. And hopefully we won't break the game this time. So, let's load on in. Say a quick hello. And I think I might change my mask again real quick, just so I can get a look at the beetle mask in daylight. We've only seen the, the nighttime shady version. Oh, it is 10 in the morning. That is it's cool as hell. And I've got like a little wobble to my head. All right, beetle mask is... It's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. It, does, it doesn't match my outfit. So I'll quickly... That's it. That's cool. Alright. Let's see how we're getting on. Yeah, may maybe I should cosplay and I'll wear a beetle mask to a an event or something. H how would you set it up so it has the... Uh, the movement? You need that movement. You'd have to set up like a trigger or have it on a, a timer or something. As I say, I'm not a... I'm not a machinist. I, c I can't do the, the technological stuff. Okay, so where's where's our girl? Loaded back in because she glitched out before. Do you need more time or are you good? Still working on it. Come back soon. Oh man, I've got nothing to do. <laughs> oh man, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna chill out in the Korea and meditate. I'm gonna edit it out, obviously, but I'm gonna meditate on what I wanna do. Oh, here we go. The huddled children giggle as I approach, the way children do. You're never quite sure whether they're entertained, nervous, or mocking. I decide not to let myself feel judged. Your glider. Uh, yes. They get excited at this. They make small sounds amongst themselves. I found gliders thrilling too when I was a child, but somehow I feel slightly like an imposter and a little bit proud. Do you want to play a game? Sure. Yeah. This game is hide and seek, do you know it? I mean, yeah. I'll tell them I used to play with a young friend of mine back home. They don't seem particularly interested in the story, and I've never felt so old. Good, you're it. We'll go and hide, and you have to find us. I'll tell them to wait once I, the great worldly wise glider, cunningly track them down. How can I call them out if I don't know their names? Yeah, don't be so sure you'll find us. This is our town. Well, anyway, I'm Parda. I'm Jeff, and I'm Nez. I'll tell them my own name, and Parda points at me. Are you ready? You have to close your eyes and count to a hundred. No peeking, no skipping, and count slow. Okay, I would never skip. Okay. I close my eyes and start to count. Wow. 
that's 100. Ready or not, here I come. I honestly thought that I had already started this. Why did I have the impression that I had already started this mission? Oh well. So, let's, let's find someone. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, you found me. Are you sure? You counted all the way to 100? I mean, no, I didn't. So, whatever. I gotta find Nez and Jeff. And honestly, just then, that was dumb luck. I don't know where the other guys are gonna be. But it's always a nice little clue when you get like the three little dots above their head. That's a clue that you're, there's something nearby that's interesting. No. Because up there is where the, the guys work. So yeah, I was looking to kill some time. And why not? Well, that's what we're all doing. We're killing time by playing games. That's, that's a good way. If you're having fun, some people say that it's like, uh, you know, playing games is wasting time. But if you're having fun and enjoying it, there's there's no way that that is a waste. And so I don't even care. Wait, there's someone. Yo, 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 yo. Were you even hiding? I thought this was a really good hiding spot. You're smart for a grown-up. Well, I'll take the compliment. Okay, that's another one. Good to go. So... One more left. This has actually been easier than what I thought it would be. I, I feared I feared the worst, but then now I've said it, there's one more to go. And I think I'm getting very, very lost. This dude just chilling. Oi, who is this? You found me. You found the others first? Ah, oh, that means I win. That was cool. The real victory is the fun that you had with your friends. Wow. No, it's this. Anyway, you're pretty fun for a grown-up, so you can have the badge. You need three of these, and then you can wear the entertainer's mask. I thank them for the game, and the badge, and say goodbye. And as I leave, I feel a small pang in my heart. I miss Saima and the rest of the clan. I wonder what she'd think of me, taking out the entertainer's mask. That is it! That is our final mask! I honestly didn't think that we'd get it. I'd honestly given up on the hope of it. But we did. Alright. Back to the Burnt Oak Station. Home base for me. That's really cool. So, that means we can get another mask. Take a look at it. I don't think the Entertainer is the path for me. Despite me being a person who makes games on YouTube. But I don't think is, is, there isn't a YouTuber mask, is there? <laughs> so, I guess the Entertainer is the closest thing. So, up here. I got my Beetle mask, but may maybe I'll change it. Because currently, this is my hot favourite. I just want to be a... Oh, I am an alien. So if I look the part, I'll be like a, an alien kind of person. It's no problem. Okay, entertainer's mask. But look at that. I want to go through life looking like this. I mean, in some respects, I already do. So, <laughs> it's not too much of a stretch. So, the climber's life, it's a bit of a whimsical thing. You kind of do whatever you want, occasionally inconveniencing other people. So maybe that's a, a relatable trait. So I'm going to grab this entertainer's mask real quick. Give it a quick look over and then we'll head back to the mysterious place. Because we've definitely run out of things to do. Okay, g give me this. Give me this. New mask. But I like being in my alien suit. I am an alien on this world. I am slightly a free spirit, climbing whatever I want. So maybe the climber's life is for me. That's it. I got an achievement for getting the, the entertainer mask. Maybe I have missed a couple of other masks. Because some, you don't have to get three badges for. You just kind of find them on your travels. But I think we're doing pretty good otherwise. I ain't gonna find all the chums. No way, no how. Well, the entertainer's mask looks like this. A somewhat ridiculous looking mask, but I guess it's the point. I feel a levity looking at it. Wearing it in almost any situation makes the world feel a little warmer. Which is is no bad thing. It's, it's no bad thing. Not, not with the scary stuff. Um, I mean, look at it. It's kind of like... <laughs> it has like a, a flop to it. Kind of like the worm head. 
But no, I, I don't think it's for me. Maybe we need to spend a little bit more time. I did have a look at the masks of this game. And... Oh, do I have... I have a jingle jangle to when I walk as well. I'm filled with bells in my head. Okay, that's very strange. But this is... No, this is not the mask for me, I don't believe. I have had a look at all the masks that are available in the game. And I've got all of them apart from one. And the one I didn't get, I'm not going to get. If you get all of the chums, I think, in the game, or at least a good chunk of them, I just... I'm not going to collect. I've got like 60 odd. And I, I need to get all of them, I think. Hang on, let, let, me, let me double check it. Yeah, I've just double checked. If you want to get the chum mask, you have to get 100. I've got... 68 I think I'm I'm a ways off I'm a real ways off but what I really want is the mysterious shrine I just gotta give her time so I'm just gonna cruise on over and hopefully enough time has passed that she's made a thing for us howdy 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 I don't want to sound impatient but um how, how's it coming I'm still working on it oh god damn it so while I'm waiting for time to pass maybe I should revisit home I don't quite want to make my final decision until after I've spoken to Fur one last time. But now I'm a lot stronger and I'm much more grown up from where I was before. So if there's a couple of things that got my curiosity before, I should be able to climb them now. Like maybe I can get on top of these statues, for example. Or maybe there was something that I saw before that kind of got my interest and I couldn't reach. But this is, this is nostalgic. This is the return home. I wonder what everyone's going to think that I've shown up as a chameleon. But I don't want to trigger the end of the game. <laughs> but I will say hello to a couple of people. And hopefully that will give me time to maybe reconfigure my thoughts slightly. But we are back home. After they abandoned me. Who's around? It's the Ibex camp. One of the options was to return to the camp. Return home and stay with everyone. But I've seen the world and I did enjoy the adventure. So I think that that is something that I want to continue to pursue. I think the way of the climate is for me. I like to explore. I like to see things. And even if there isn't a reward. Oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, even if there isn't a reward, it's still worth the journey. As the Ibex camp draws closer, the imagined threshold between home and gliding is palpable. It reminds me of coming in from a sandstorm, so fierce that the grains have whipped through the air and through your clothes. You peel off the layers of sand-beaten fabric and marvel at the dust on your skin, the bits that manage to get through despite every precaution. And though you feel so grateful to be home and so comforted by the safety of the indoors, you can't help but smile nostalgic as you wash the sand away. What an adventure you had, and it was only for you. Am I ready to choose my mask now? There's no going back if I do. Not yet. Not yet. So I can't check out the camp. I can only go back when I'm fully ready. And I'm not. I just want to... I have one lingering regret. And once I fulfill that, then I'll happily make my final decision. How's it going? Upon seeing me, Fur all but leaps up with excitement. Sable, I've been waiting for you. I decoded the final inscription. You were right. It was a game, a race, and you completed it exactly as intended. Do you know what it means? Uh, I'm really fast. Well, well, I mean, technically, it's not a measure of speed. It's more about completion, but I'm sure Simoon carried you quickly. It barely registers with me that she uses Simoon, despite never being introduced, and I don't get a chance to bring it up before she goes on. There's a prize, a real one. Once you complete the race, the pillars reveal the text, translate the text, and you get bike parts, incredible ones. Older in their design than any I've ever seen, and perfectly elegant. You must try them, Sable, you must. I can fit the parts onto your bike if you'd like to ride it now. Uh, yes, please. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so... What one was it? It was... Not the whale ship. Look how far she can go. The beetle bike? Gliding bike? Oh, it's oh, it's this thing. Look at it. This bike? Fur shakes her head and shrugs, but in, it's in a nice way. 
the way you do at something so grand and so beautifully awe-inspiring that you can't help but feel small and sort of casually useless in its shadow. This bike is wonderful. I tell her I agree and thank her for the opportunity to ride in an ancient race. I also explain that in playing that old game, I felt more connected to the past than I did hearing the drier bits of history. That's great. I mean it. That's... I don't know if I'm just a romantic or something, but I always have such a hard time connecting to the past without connecting to the people. Strange for a machinist, isn't it? I think about it. I suppose it is strange for a machinist somehow, but I find it comforting too. There really is room for all kinds behind all masks. I want you to keep the bike and bring it into a new era. Let's see how the world changed while it was sleeping. I don't ride much myself nowadays, so it'll be in good hands with you, and I get to be smug around the other machinists, which is all the reward I really need. I thank Fur for her skill and generosity, and head off. We got it. Look at this thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't realise that buying bike parts was cumulative, so the more you buy, the faster your stuff is. This is... This is a weird bike. But, well, I'm a weird person. So, <laughs> let's just ride. So, look at, look at my mission list. I've got nothing to do. I can collect worms for the rest of my days, or I can, I can have an end to my gliding, which is what we're gonna do. I think, I think I've made my decision. I think I've made it known what I want to do. I just got to get there. So it's basically, basically straight. Basically straight. So, yeah. I think, I think I want to be a climber. I want to continue to explore, continue to glide. And I'm getting weird sounds from riding this bike. So hopefully it's enjoying the ride and seeing how the world has kind of in some ways fallen to ruin, but in other ways it's thriving. The people are kind, the people are nice and they're doing their best. It's a hostile world, but everybody has to wear their mask, otherwise it's not it's not good for their lungs. You know how it is. So let's keep riding and yeah, there it is. See the two statues at the end? I'm, I'm gonna say it's, it's from Naruto inspiration. <laughs> But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's been it's been done in other things. Was it in Lord of the Rings or something? But no, Naruto is my example. That's the one I'm sticking with. And we are going to head on home. Tell our family what we want to do. But we've met so many people on this journey. And when you think about it, the variety of the landscapes that we've seen. You wouldn't think that a desert wasteland would have so many different kinds of tones and atmospheres but we really saw all kinds of stuff all right we are almost there and I think the way of the climber is for me I was gonna be a guardian but yeah the city folk man the city folk always ruin things <laughs> all right so I'm gonna be an irresponsible independent climber explore the world do things my own way if I see a thing I'm gonna go and check it out and occasionally it will inconvenience the people around me. But hopefully I can return the favour. That's kind of what it's all about. And life can be a bit of an adventure. So the adventure will continue after I've made this decision. Okay, into camp. Let's, let's go for this ending. Here we are. I'm an alien. I'm a climber. This, I'm ready. But am I really ready? I'm definitely, definitely ready. We're doing it. Here I am. I wonder if they even recognise me. Because, you know, look at me. <laughs> but I made it. This is my decision. And this is our family. You saw me off with smiles. I'm assuming they had smiles, but yeah. And now I've returned. And I can show them how I've grown. And I can tell them all the stories, all the things I see, all the people I met. 
And the things I discovered that we're aliens, but that's a cool thing. It's a nice thing. Alright. I should speak to JD when I'm ready. And she is the lady here, but I'll talk to everybody else, everyone in camp. Hey, I greet Saizo. How do you do, clan child? Uh, I met a lot of your machinist friends. I know this, and I hope that they were good to you, and to Simone. I saw how they were, and she seems to take a bit of pride in that, which is rare to see in Saizo. Some really great machinists are out there. I like them a lot. Okay. Do you think I should choose the Machinist Mask? Maybe I should join the Order. She crosses her arms and takes time to think. Some will tell you that the life of a Machinist is lonely. It isn't. And not only because we're assigned to clans, who so often welcome us into their number. No, it's, uh, it's more. It's because we're never truly alone. As you were never truly alone on your guiding. You went with Samoon. I think at the moments where I sat looking at some map or hiding from some foul weather, or trying to get over a sudden bout of a very powerful homesickness, and Simoon gave a little hum that I could feel up right through my legs. You have a very special bike, Sable. I nod. As you returned, I sat on the tower and heard Simoon's purr grow to a roar, and in it the traces of those whose work has helped me give her shape. She speaks with many voices now, and that resonance. So as there seems to shiver, it's why we do what we do. So if it appeals, then I can only recommend it. I thank Saizu for her counsel. Okay, talk about the bike. How is it? Uh, I would have been lonely without her, of course. The desert can be a desolate and sparse place. Travelling with a partner is the only way to keep the mind at peace. What happened to Samoon now? Well, it's almost time for Simon's guiding. Samoon will likely accompany her across the dunes. I feel a pang of melancholy as I think about losing Samoon. It had to happen one day. Nobody truly owns a bike in the Abexi, but it's merely accompanied by one, and I'm grateful to have at least had that blessing. Okay, let's speak to someone else. Oh, maybe... I say I've made my decision, but maybe by talking to everybody else. Maybe I'll have a change of heart. Okay, advise me. Summer crosses her arms. It's a challenge. T I tell Summer I had to come back, because when I left, some minuscule little beetle hunting part stealing menace threw a fit about it and couldn't stop crying because she missed me so much. She nods. Yeah, JD took it real hard. I can't help it, I laugh, and I think in doing so, I let her win. I tell her that I missed her. I missed you too, and I'm happy that you came back. Though I can practically see the pout beneath her mask, I'm impressed at how genuine she's able to sound, even if you don't end up staying long. Okay... Are you going to cry if I go? I don't think so, for two reasons. She counts them off on her fingers. One, because it's already happened once. I'm used to it. Two, because soon it's going to be my gliding, which I'm going to stay on forever. So I can just go on my bike and chase you down wherever you go. I tell Sima that she can't stay on the gliding forever, and that she'll have to choose a mask. Then I choose the mask of the bounty hunter. That's not a real mask. Yeah, it is. I say it's not. She shrugs. I guess she didn't find it. I tell her no, it's not real, and if it were, I would have found it. I don't think so, it's really hard to find, it's part of it. To become a hunter, you have to be a hunter. I'm ready, my next response, but choose to hold my tongue, lest I lose what maturity I gained on my gliding. Saima makes a broad gesture that I think is meant to emulate the knocking of a arrow in a bow. Good luck, Sable. Let's talk about the beetle. I think you look pretty silly. But you look silly in every mask. Good, I love that. Missed this one, definitely. I think... I think it would be a little like getting to play all the time and have lots of pets. And maybe you get to speak beetle language. I always see beetles go up to each other and do dances and click around and hiss and everything and maybe they're saying things? So, if you want to speak beetle, you could do that. She shrugs. I don't know, all masks are different and it's not really going to matter once I'm on my gliding and get to come and visit you. I ask Saima if she means to come and bother me. If you're bothered, that's you, but I'm going to come and visit. I can't help but laugh. I tell her I'm looking forward to it. Okay, next. Lots of people to talk to. It's Driss. Is there something I want to discuss? How's the clan been? Chaotic as ever, which I think you should be pretty happy about. Okay, 
I asked Driss why he thinks I'd want that for him. Because it means it wasn't you. What wasn't me? I mean, that you left on your gliding, and things stayed exactly as chaotic as they'd always been, which means... I opt not to suggest that it means Driss himself is so scattered, and that everything will always feel chaotic. I really have matured. You're not the problem. How nice for me. Okay, what about the Scrapper's Mask? The Scrapper's Mask? You? Really? I'll tell you, Sable, I would have pegged you for it, but you've always had quite the imagination, haven't you? That's uh, more of an inner monologue. Yeah, well, I think it's a good trait for a Scrapper. You need to be able to see the beauty in the scraps, you know? And that takes a very creative brain. I think a lot of folks see Scrappers and just think they're rubbish pickers, you know? But if you could look at something old and dream up something new, then I think you've got it. And I'd support you every scrap of the way. Thanks for the advice. Um, I'd like to relitigate the sand cutter incident. I asked Driss once and for all if on that fateful day of my gliding he had actually forgotten to help out with my bike and if the test ride to the sand cutter was a sly cover up. He cocks his head. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. No, no idea. I remember the whole bike thing going smoothly. Plus, you took that sand cutter out and you didn't even get a little bit on a fire. It's great stuff. I accept Driss's response. I suppose even the gliding cannot be the answer to all things. Okay. Scrappers are quirky dudes. They're, they're quite fun. They're kind of regarded slightly as being a bit odd. But their heart's in the right place. I respect that. Okay. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, hey. It's strange how children change so much over a short period. Alaria has grown, but she'll always be a child to me. Okay. Alaria subconsciously stands a little taller and prouder as I say the words. I can't help but smile remembering all the times adults will say, oh, how you've grown to me as a child. Well, you've not grown at all. I haven't just grown. I can cry way higher now. Zeki hates it. It's great. Uh, not all growth is external. It feels like a hollow defensive statement, but it's also true. Ilaria doesn't look convinced. Saima will leave for her gliding soon, but at least you'll be back now. I don't have the heart to tell her that I might not stay with the Abexi. There's still time to decide, so I hold back. Let's talk about climbing. Oh, how high did you go? Did you touch a cloud? If I had a gliding stone, I would definitely touch a cloud. I reveal that I got the climbing mask. Ilaria seems to vibrate with excitement and jealousy. I can't believe it. I mean, I'm wearing it. You have to choose it. You'll choose it, right? I mean, why wouldn't you? That'd be just silly. I don't think I'll get a word in here, so I just let Ilaria effusively speak to me for a while, enjoying her passion for something so particular. Being a climber is a pretty solitary existence for the most part, mostly foraging for things that grow in the higher climbs, fixing or salvaging from ships in high places. But the sights you see and the places you get to go, it'll be like a continual gliding at times. Will I be comfortable at those heights without the gliding stone? It's a dangerous thing. Let's talk to the next person. All my options. My child. Welcome home. Have you been taking care of yourself? You look kind of bony. Are you well? Zeki fusses over me. She would always look for reasons to take care of us. That's no good. Not at all. We'll have to fix you up with some of Jade's lamb stew. I'm involuntarily salivating at the thought. It's good to be back. Where have you been? After you left, we headed to some older Abexi campsites, places we used before you were born. Going back, it was beautiful. The land flourishes when you leave it for so long, each place transformed with life and abundant with things to forage since we were last there. Once we leave the Ewer, we'll not be coming back for a long time. It needs time to recover from nourishing us. Okay, the entertainer's mask, I'm not doing it. Oh, I see you were kept busy with the young ones on your gliding too. Everybody needs a bit of levity now and then. It's an important part of life, and valued by many. But you know the Abexi are not in a position to accommodate such trifles. Fun and games are just that. If you pick this mask, you'll have to find a richer clan to join. We can't afford it. I hope you think carefully about what mask you choose, Sable. Okay. So they're, they're not a fan of me doing that either. Oh, it's Hilal. It's good to have you home. I thought about you so much, just imagining all the excitement. Every time we pass the cliffside, I thought I bet Sable was just hovering everywhere. Okay, what do you think of the climber's mask? I ask Kadal what they think of it. They light up straight away, which I think I should have expected. It's a brilliant mask. There is a lot of really good masks, obviously, but climbing? 
if you ask me, the worst part of the gliding's end is losing the perpetual stone. To hover forever, to fear nothing, from heights or falls, that is an uncommon freedom, and you have to let it go. To me, climbing is the closest thing one gets to keeping that connection between oneself and the perpetual. Just as the stone does, it banishes fear and risk, lets you explore the world's great vertical spaces with knowledge and fortitude. I think it's a great mask, and probably would have been my choice had I not fallen so much in love with the Abexi. I thank Fahel for their thoughts, and again for the stone that they gave me for so long. Okay, have you heard of Law the Fabulist? Have you? Of course I have. Not much for travel, you know, but not two years ago I made a special trip to Akria just to see her. Why? I tell her that I met her out in the desert, and that we spent a whole evening talking about life and poetry. I add that I think I might have inspired some original work. That's amazing. So you think- oh, sorry. I'm so excited. So you think it's possible that next time you see Law, she might actually read a poem that you inspired? I say, yeah, it's, it's quite possible. Now that is a gliding. Who cares what mask you choose? You got to hover around the world, and you inspired Law the Fabulous to write a new poem. If I were you, I'd put on my retirement mask, because I'd be done. We'd laugh together, and it feels really, really good. Nice. Who's this? Welcome back, Umar. I don't remember the last time I heard Umar speak. Maybe to get a warning, but never to converse. It takes me a moment to think of something to reply. Um, how have you been? Umar shrugs silently. I think that's all I'm going to get from him on that. Did you miss me? He emits a low grunt, and it sounds like a chuckle. I think that means he missed me. Okay, I've got to make the decision. Okay, so... Hmm... I think I still want to be a climber. Arguments have been made. Obviously she's into it. And this dude's into it as well because he's kind of a romantic. I quite, I'm quite, i quite sympathetic to the scrapper's calls as well. Because they're, they're kind of like goofy eccentric guys. And yeah, they're, they're just kind of nice helpful people. But comedian mask though, gots to be. Being back with the Abexi is more comfortable than I expected. I think I thought the gliding would change every part of me that I would come home different. Perhaps more mature or jaded, or at least able to grasp more of Driss's jokes or Hillel's poetry. The actual change is more subtle, and it's that, somehow, despite spending so much time discovering the world beyond, I've never felt more like a part of this clan. And it isn't about being a Bexy or which mask I ultimately choose. It's simply that I no longer feel so behind everyone, or like they know some grown-up secret I yet to understand. I feel embraced, wholly, as the person that I am. I'm Sable. So, now we've heard your stories, or at least the ones that you're happy to tell, which means it's nearly time now. Jade is sighs contented. I suspect that she was more concerned with my experience of the gliding than the grand choice at its end. And for that I'm grateful. Are you ready to choose? Am I? Got the mask? Wow, the Ibex mask. I'm ready to choose. She nods. I won't keep you, Sable. If you know what you want, then all I desire is to learn what that is and to celebrate it with you. I'm allowed to be excited too, aren't I? She chuckles. Whenever you're ready, proceed to the temple. Okay. Okay. So the only mask I didn't get was the chum queen mask. I got everything else that this game could offer me. So I've weighed up all of my options. Okay, I'm just going to walk. I'm just going to walk. Going to call up my super bike. I have seen this world. I have learned its secrets. I have learned the history. I can't see a thing because there's too much dust. <laughs> okay. But I'm going to make my decision. I sit. There's our bike. This is Samoon. And we're going to... We're going to say goodbye to her. Because she, now she's going to join somebody else's gliding. I I haven't got my bike anymore. I've still got my gliding, but I'm going to lose that as well. I'm going to lose a lot of my freedoms. Being a climber without the gliding, I really relied on it. But the idea that I can climb, and if people want like the eggs, or if they want scrap materials, I can still be a part of all of those clans because I can visit them when, whenever I want to be a part of that clan. I can say, hello, do you need anything? Do a little job from, and from that, 
as a climber, I can still be a part of these communities. This is what I want. I can be individual. I can also be part of other people's journeys as well. This is what I've chosen and this is what I want to do. So this is where the game started. And this is also where the game is going to end. Hello? Down here. Okay. I don't know if I need to select or because I'm wearing it by default this is what I've chosen so I'm glad I'm wearing it this is what I want look at all these masks these are the ones I've collected aren't they that's really cool. Imagine choosing the worm. <laughs> Why would you choose the worm? <laughs> it's nine o'clock. Maybe I should wait till daytime so it's a bit more colourful. It's a bit drab. Wait. I should head to the temple of Rahana and choose my mask. So, why can't I talk to the cartographer mask? But the one I want is the climber's mask. Do you want to choose the climber's mask? Can I imagine a life of such great heights? Yeah, I can, but maybe, maybe I'll, yeah, I'll think about it. C can you really choose the mask? <laughs> Here's what I know about the sandworm mask. One, the last wearer died. Two, I found it in a reeking cave near its body of its maddened creator. Three, it appears to be made out of the flesh of baby worms. Is this the mask I want to choose? No, <laughs> no way. But imagine being the vigilante. Wow. No. But so many interesting masks. The scrapper mask. Could I see myself out there finding treasure amid the ruins? I can do it as a climber. I'm going to be a climber. I'm doing it. But I do want to... I don't know. I kind of want to wait for the sun to rise. Maybe I'll do that. I'll cut this out. It is 6am. Light has returned to this world. I didn't want to finish the game and it will be like dreary and dark. I, I wanted to see some colour because it this is a got some of the best art direction that you'll see in a game. So yeah, now the sun's coming in, now you can actually see a little bit of what's going on. Oh, I'll just drop in here. Ooh. It's fine, it's no problem. The colour is back in this world, everything isn't dark anymore, hopefully. Maybe I'll wait till 9am or something. But no, we're gonna do it. I've delayed long enough. Climber's mask. Yes. Like the beasts who gave us our name, the Abexi are no strangers to heights nor to simple climbs. Too often, one of us has had to chase a wandering ibex up the cliffside best we could, clinging to little rocks below and calling hopefully up after it. But those sorts of climbs are different and so practical as to be boring. The life of a climber though, there's so much more. The gliding stone is a temporary gift. It's meant to be a protective shell to allow gliders to make a few mistakes and to have a few accidents as they explore for the very first time. But what it also grants us is the ability to climb without fear, and to taste the triumph of a mountain well scaled, and see the world in a new light. The desert is bigger than I could ever have imagined, and while this has always seemed true across the horizon, seeing it stretch out before me from the top of the great cliff was another experience entirely, one that I'm not happy to give up with the stone. If I wear the mask of the climber, it's not simply so that I might help in all those tasks that require climbing, though of course I'll be happy to make it my duty. Rather, if I choose this mask, it's because the gliding has shown me what my heart desires, and I'm ready to do the work it takes to achieve it without help. I think this is, this is what I want. That's it. I'll take up the mask of the climber and look into its empty eyes. I can't wait for us to see the world together. Decision has been made. 
Fate is sealed. I'm a climber. This is my answer, this is my calling, and this is what I want. And I've got to return the stone. And my gliding has finished. My gliding is over. So as a once in a lifetime event. But this is who I am. And this is what I want to do with my life. No more gliding for me. I'm just falling and climbing. So hopefully our family will be happy with that. And that is the end of the game. That was an amazing journey. I really enjoyed all of it. Lots of things we saw, lots of people we met, and we were able to choose what we want to do with ourselves. So it gave us time to think about it. And we were able to learn about the world and our place in it. And yeah, that was Sable. I really hope you enjoyed going on this journey with me. And this is Ushio signing off. And hopefully I will see you next time.